We were redeemed through his suffering and we have been reborn. We have been given new life in his blood, in his sacrifice, in his promises. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Last week, we, we took a look at the, the contracts, the covenants that God put into place for people he loved. And they were, there were a lot of bloody sacrifices, and we saw that blood sacrifice come right down to Jesus, who when he was offering the bread and the wine of his body and blood to his disciples said, take and drink this. This cup of my blood is the new contract. The others have gone by. The others are finished. And as a matter of fact, when he says things are finished, go back to the cross when Jesus is about to die and he screams out, Tetelestai, which means it's finished. That is an old statement. It's a commercial statement that says everything is complete. Everything has been paid for. It's done. And I would argue that Jesus signed that contract in his own blood, which is the whole point and so now that we have seen that, we're, we're getting down to the final weeks of the Christian, Christian near, the liturgical seasons. And the green season with the green paraments, that's the long one. And we take that time to, to think about Jesus and all of the promises that he has made for us and that he has completed for us. So that when we hear him say, take this, this is. When he says it is, then it is, because he is God. And so in this cyclical routine of church seasons, we, we are about to start with, with Advent, the he's coming season. And then we get to Christmas. He is born, thank God. And we sing all sorts of wonderful songs of excitement and, and just celebrating the fact that God has done exactly what he promised, sent his son. The next season that the church moves into is Easter. He's coming, he has come, and this is what he has come to do to suffer and die, to be buried, and as he said, in three days, rise again from the dead. Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descends to, to empower people to speak. And you remember, they, there were crowds from all over the place, and they were speaking in their different languages. They were, they were hearing in different languages. And when they went home, do you remember the end of that text? All of the people who heard in their own language the words of God and salvation in Christ, they all went home and told other people. That's our job. We have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to tell the story of salvation. So this constant rhythmic pattern is always pointing to the confidence that we have that Jesus does what he says. He does what he says, and it happens when he says, and it happens why he says it's going to happen. Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will surely, what? I will come again 
and I will take you to be with me where I am. And Jesus also said, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. There is an end coming. He's coming, he has come, he suffered and died and rose again, and he's coming again. And so Jesus is talking about that very issue today. And it is one of the stranger texts. And you're going to be tempted to go back and look at history and try to replay this text throughout history. And it's a good thing to do because that's part of what he's talking about. So Jesus and the disciples are coming out of the temple and one of them said to Jesus, referring to the temple, look teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus responded, do you see these great buildings? There's not going to be one stone left on another. They're all going to be thrown down. And it would be, it would have been an absolute shock to hear that coming from anybody. I mean, the temple is the center of the universe for the faithful Jews. That could never happen. And then, of course, it happened. I love the way the kids were throwing stones all over the place. That was like the best. It would have been difficult with the temple because the temple was built so well, so it would never fall down. You know the big stones that Jesus was talking about? Solid rock, 15 square feet, each one. Try moving that. Yeah, it's not going to happen while well, I'm trying it anyway. Foundation, everything was built perfectly. But as the Bible says, unless the Lord builds the house, you're wasting your time. Because everything is shakable, everything is breakable. And when I say things happen, they're going to happen. So Solomon's temple, the first temple is built. It's hardcore, it's heavy, it's sturdy, 15 feet square blocks. The base of the temple is just solid. And it's never going to fall apart. At least until 586 B.C. when the Babylonians march into the city and they destroy the temple completely and they take the Jews out of Jerusalem and make them slaves. A few years later, 538, and Darius the king allows the slaves to go free and says to them, go ahead and rebuild that temple which they did and then of course that forever temple that was so glorious one more time was destroyed 70 AD the Jews got a little bit too uppity for the Romans who marched in and destroyed everything and it has never been rebuilt. The Western Wall, the Wailing Wall that you read about, that is the only thing that's really left. The foundation is underground. The mountain rock has now been built there where Muslims, faithful Muslims, go and pray and worship. Everything has changed. Except nothing has changed. It's what happened. It happened when it was supposed to happen, and it happened because and why. But Peter and James and John and Andrew asked Jesus, well, when, when is this going to happen? I mean, it's a bizarre story, Lord, that you're telling us. When will these things happen, and what are going to be the signs? How can we know that it's about to happen? Now, when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, don't be alarmed. 
Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Anybody here ever heard a rumor of war? Have you counted the number of wars and kingdoms doing battle today? There's a lot. And I remember, remember as a kid, my grandmother wondering, with all the wars going on, is this it? My parents, is this it? I'm sitting watching CNN news thinking, wow, is this it? I don't know. Don't ask me. The Lord knows when it's going to happen. An interesting little tidbit for those of you who may be interested in the New York Times. They defined war as having an active conflict with a minimum of 1,000 people killed. It's sort of an awful way to measure things. But out of the past 3,400 years, humans have been at peace for 268 years. That's 8% of recorded history. I've been alive, I know you find this hard to believe. What are you already laughing? I haven't even, I am 75. I know, amen, that's the end of this sermon, I quit. Do you know what that means though for me? And I did the calculation. At 75, there has only been a period of peace for six years that I have been alive. I know, right? It doesn't seem like it. So when is this going to happen? Well, there's going to be earthquakes in various places, and then there's going to be famines. We live on an earthquake fault. When it happens, I hope it happens quick, and I hope I'm living back in Massachusetts. <laughs> but it's going to happen. And, and when there are famines, more than 30 million people in 22 countries and territories are suffering in severe food crisis and are on the brink of famine today. Read the news. Everything that Jesus told the disciples and everything that he has told us can be frightening because they all deal with death and destruction. And death and destruction are part of sin. And we all know that we are sinful. But, Jesus says, look, don't let anybody lead you astray. These are just the beginnings of birth pains. I asked my wife Cheryl what birth pains were like, and I got hit. <laughs> but birth pains are also referenced by St. Paul in, in Romans, who says, we know that the whole of creation, and this is what Jesus is talking about too, all of creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth. Not just people, but trees and everything else. They've all been groaning. We ourselves included. We who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons and daughters and the redemption of our bodies. Jesus said, when a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she's delivered her baby, she no longer remembers the, the anguish because the joy of giving birth to a human being far surpasses everything else. Our Father, our Heavenly Father is giving new life, a new birth to us through the pain and the anguish of Jesus. That's the childbirth pains 
on that third day when Jesus arose, arose victorious, we were redeemed through his suffering and we have been reborn. We have been given new life in his blood, in his sacrifice, in his promises. Because I have risen from the dead, so shall you. The Lord says, right now you're going to have sorrow. But I will see you again. And your hearts will rejoice. And nobody will take that joy from you. Imagine sitting with the disciples. You're there. And Jesus actually says that to you. Right now, you're going to have some pretty stinko times. And we do. And nobody's surprised. A lot of us get very anxious. But the Lord said, it's going to happen. But you're going to see me again. And your hearts are going to rejoice. And no one will ever take that joy away from you. Does everybody believe that? Please say yes. That's the whole deal. As Eric said, even when we die, we know that we will be resurrected from the dead to be with Jesus forever. While we wait, there are going to be times of distress and sorrow and fear, but it's temporary, exactly like the temple. If Jesus wants things to get better, they will get better. If he wants us to be perfect in him, we will be perfect in him. What? Things are going to be destroyed. When? No idea. Jesus does. Why? Because he has something so far better. He has perfection. And <laughs> as I walk around and I complain about my sore foot, I think, okay, now my sock is wet. How bad is this going to be? And then I think, man, new feet, able to walk with the Lord, chatting about stuff. It's not going to get any better because that is perfection. Jesus said it's coming. Jesus keeps his promises because Jesus loves us so much. So when you hear all this stuff, acknowledge it. It's happening. We live in a broken world. And then pray in thanksgiving that Jesus has already won the war and all of the victories that go with it. That's reality. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.